Hello and welcome to the Crucible Chat. This is the episode, I say the final episode, but by which I mean it's the episode about the final. <laughs> I, I, I think we will probably come up with some sort of snooker podcast, but it won't be Crucible Chat. It'll have to be uh, Riga Masters... Barbican Chat. Barbican Chat. Exactly. It'll have to be something else that isn't the Crucible. But I'm here with Mr. Joe Hannard. How are you, Joe? Yes, I'm good, thanks. I'm just um I'm just contemplating the Marshall Arena chat uh podcast. But uh, no I'm I'm doing good. Enjoyed the snook over the weekend and in in a way, you know, I'm quite happy to, to have my life back. <laughs> 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 that that snooker's out of the way. But yeah, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Did you um I mean let's let's go uh, straight into it. Let's talk about the the big result that everyone is talking about. Uh Wayne Cooper beat Ahmed Ali three one in the World Seniors. Oh, well, I, exactly. I mean, that was a, that was a, against expectation, really, wasn't it? I mean, uh, I don't know if you've seen, but but Ahmed came out with um, with a black Q. He did, which, yeah. Which you know I've not seen ever before. So um, apparently, he uh, he let Stephen Hendry have a shot with it in practice. Well, there we go. You see, I mean that. That's getting a little bit too personal now. Of uh, Ahmed letting Hendry have a shot of his cue, but you know, apparently uh, Hendry liked it. Went straight in the pocket. So um, well, there you go. There you go. go. You know, everyone, everyone will want to go Fair on Ahmed's on Ahmed's seniors. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean, of course, the it's kind of strange. I think that the World Seniors is right after the um, the actual World Championships because it does <clears> feel. I mean, it doesn't just feel; it literally is going like we've got the biggest event in snooker to a packed house with the best players, and then literally like less than a week later, they're like, "Oh, come see this event with some people who used to be good yeah. playing in front of ten punters." <laughs> Well, I, I mean that's that's the thing for me. I I don't. I think they should probably do it at another point in the year. Really, I think coming straight or have it as a precursor to the the full on crucible. Like, you know, the hype has has reached breaking point with the final of the world championship, and then you know people are a bit tired of it by then. So I know some way to fit it into the schedule because yeah it is embarrassing that in a 900 seat capacity crowd there's literally 10 people <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know we're not even exaggerating if you have not seen it hmm. there were about 10 people and in the crowd it's depressing because because rob walker does his best to build it up and he's like how's it feel to play at the crucible and it's like yeah. mate i mean they are technically at the crucible but but it's not the same as playing at the World Championships. Let's stop. Let's stop pretending yeah, that it is. Because yeah. um, it's just awkward. Because it's just silent and yeah, uh, it's it's a shame because I think I think once it gets to the later rounds, there will be more people there and you know, but uh, I think the last sixteen or, or what is it? The last thirty-two, I think actually. No, it's, oh, last it's, 24. It's so. the last 24. There's technically like qualifying rounds or something like that, which are people people have qualified to qualify for the qualifiers, which is the last 24. I and mean, then... they haven't earned their right to play at the one table setup. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Can you imagine being poor Jack Lazowski? He's never played at the yeah. one table setup. Yeah. I mean, Michael yeah. Holt is going yeah. to be playing in the one table setup. Having yeah. never done it as as a professional, he's going to be doing it and probably wiping the floor with everybody. I think he will. I, 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 I do you know what? I bet that's why he he purposely dropped out the top sixty four because he was like, <laughs> I want to play. Yeah. The, I want to win the world seniors. I'm going to drop uh -huh. out on purpose. I'm going to win that. Say I was a world champion at the Crucible. Yeah. Well, I, I I watched an interview with him last night about it, and he was talking about how. Oh, it would it would be nice to be a, a world champion, and you know, um, and he he was talking about how he's using it as match practice for Q school, and I'm thinking, for, I mean, these guys can't even string together a ten break, never mind, you know, a fifty break. Most of them, you know, I, I, a little bit harsh, I suppose, but I mean, I was watching 
last night I was watching Philip Williams versus mm-hmm. um, Bob Chaperone, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it was it was quite painful, really. <laughs> Uh, because, I think it's because you you know you come from the the world championship and mm. the euphoria of the semi finals and finals and you know a record number of centuries in the tournament and just such a high standard of play yeah. and then you like you like watching and it yeah I just don't think it's the right time to tune into seniors I think you need a little bit of time to sort of disconnect from the real world of snooker before you you get into it, it it's it all be, a bit fast for me yeah it, it would be a bit like if they followed uh, the final Grand Prix of an F1 season and then next week they went here's some children in some go-karts <laughs> yeah 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 and, and and you know they they do that in a sense they have um, they have like an, a, a test event straight after the, the last day of the season and you know nobody's going to watch that nobody's going to be hyped about watching meaningless testing however at the start of the season in pre-season people people want to watch testing because they're excited about the new season starting so i do think if you move the seniors perhaps to before the world championship it would it would almost build the hype a little bit um for for what's to come and you know if we see if we get a ridiculous eventuality where Jimmy White has qualified for the Crucible, if he goes into it having won the seniors, you know, mm. um, yeah, I, I, I think it would just add to it. Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, that's never going to happen ever again. <laughs> well, I know, 16 years and counting, and, you know, he's he's not getting any younger, is he? So. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's flying in practice. Well, I, I mean, it, isn't it crazy to think Jimmy White was 44 the last time he went to the Crucible, and, you know, three three of the players that were at the one table set up this year were 46, 47, so... <sighs> well, if, if, uh, if I mean, he... He wasn't close in the end, but you know, if Bingham had beat Trump, they all would have been mm. uh, forty-five 40. or above. Yeah, which is mad, really. Yeah, yeah. How well, would you how would you uh, make the seniors more exciting? Because it's quite a tough watch. Do we need some sh- it's like shootout rules with people shouting at them? Do we need <laughs> the players to be drinking like the eighties? If you really want to take it back to the them being seniors, have it like the eighties. Have them drinking yeah. and smoking. Like, I mean, the way they used to do it with the seniors' events is they would have John Virgo commentating live in the in the arena. Yeah, and it would sort of be played all around the auditorium, and I think the crowd got involved, and you know, there'd be a bit of laughing and joking. I th- I think. Uh, the 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 seniors has almost taken itself too seriously now. Yeah, With, I, and, I agree. and you know, like the likes of Dennis and Cliff Thorburn have just went. Well, that's enough now because bloody Dominic Dale's playing now and he's a mm. tour player, or you know, Mark Williams <laughs> won it a couple of years ago. And well, how old was um, Cliff last year? Was he was he? 18? I don't know. Was he in his eighties? I have no idea how old Cliff Thorburn is. I mean, he must be older than Dennis and Cole, must he? Let's have a little. Little gander, Thorburn. Um, but he's been commentating this week. Yeah, um, he is, yeah. He's 74, 74. So right, he's about so he's he's younger than Virgo, actually. Um, but that but that means that last year, like the oldest person would have been seventy four, uh, the youngest player would have been forty or something like that, and that's a huge huge gap in terms of. Everything. I just, I, I feel like it shouldn't be open to current professionals, and I, as much as I'm happy for them to have the opportunity, I'm not sure we they should just be letting any old geezer into it, <laughs> you know, like half of the field of the world seniors. A, 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 you know, amateur players, and have only ever been good amateurs. You know, mm. this year we've got Nigel Bond in there, but had he stayed on the tour, he wouldn't have been allowed in. You mm. know, same with Michael Holt, and and for me, I think to make it fun and nostalgic, mm. you've got to have the old names in there. Yeah, and perhaps it's rank and event winners only, or something like that. For the World Seniors Championship, maybe for the UK 
seniors open or whatever then yeah you can let the amateurs in and whatever and maybe you can have a wild card come into the world seniors championship but i think for the world seniors championship at the crucible one table setup where in theory you could sell out 900 seats you know you've well, got especially if, if they if said... it was Hendry and, and, and White and Marco Fu and James Wattener and Tony Drago and yeah. you know I, I think that would get people along well, people don't want to go and see Wayne Cooper I'm sorry I'm sorry no. Wayne I know that you're an avid listener of the podcast but I'm sure you would agree we've just lost one of our ten <laughs> listeners <laughs> Wayne I didn't say that feel free to just listen to my comments just yeah. ignore Joe He's I'll mute myself Joe just doesn't like you. He's jealous because Joe. There we go. He's muted himself. It's improved the podcast tenfold, frankly. Poor old Wayne Cooper. What if he wins it this year, mate? He'll be in the champion of champions. Then you won't be laughing. But they, you know, as much as I love David Lilly, <laughs> why was he in the tournament last year? And you know, I don't. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's it is a bit weird that they uh, only let. The bottom sixty-four <laughs> old players enter of the one is such a weird rule. Oh, and when I'm forty, I can enter the the seniors and try and qualify for the world seniors. That sh- shouldn't be a thing. Why not, Joe? Why? Not? Well, you know, I, I, I was thinking to be, myself, I might as well. You won't be saying well, this. You won't be saying this when you're when forty. I'm when I'm stood in the crucible and playing yeah. Wayne Cooper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Being brought out by Rob Walker. <laughs> Uh, I mean that, that's the, that's the thing you know I feel like some of the players there I feel like I could I could genuinely give them a game you know and that's 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 sad I mean Dennis probably made a high break of 15 last year and yeah. you know yeah. I think perhaps uh, this is going to sound weird and so contradictory to what I've just said but I think the matches should be longer no, Joe, why? <laughs> they already take about an hour in a frame. Maybe six reds. Maybe okay, six okay. reds. But that'll make them shorter. Yeah, maybe six reds, but more frames. Okay, I could, I could see that. That, that makes sense. You know sense. what I mean? Best of nine. So you've got a mid-session interval, because in, well, intervals change matches. Did they used to have a, a shot clock at the seniors? Is that right? I don't know. can't remember. Would that I, I don't. Would I don't. That make re- it better to watch, or would they just make more mistakes? Because they already make a lot of mistakes when they're doing one minute a shot. Frankly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but the the, the ridiculous thing is, we're we're joking about the standard. Yet Nigel Bond reached the quarterfinals of the UK Championship last year, and mm-hmm. you know, um, <sighs> Hendry can still knock in century breaks. Jimmy White can obviously do that. Ken can do that. Mm. I think it's the. <laughs> Uh, pardon the, the the phrase, but it's the riffraff that are, that are in there. <laughs> <laughs> that that are, that are the issues, really. You know, perhaps perhaps you make it like the masters and just invitation only. I I don't know. Or fans pick something like that. I mean that would be. I mean that would be interesting because. <laughs> like, Trump, Trump yeah. doesn't get any votes. <laughs> I mean, Jack Mazowski might finally enter so he can get to the uh, single table. <laughs> yeah. Just dye his hair grey and be like, come on, guys, I'm basically an old man. I mean, to be fair, Jack Mazowski's in his 30s now, so he's not that far off being eligible to, to enter. You know, I, I mean, mean, Neil Robertson's 40 now. If he takes yeah. the season off and drops out the 64, he can enter it. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> Ronnie could enter it. You know, I, that is just. It's bizarre. I think it needs reworking. I think it's a fun idea, a fun concept. I'm really happy that it's on the BBC, but I just think it needs a bit of work. Hmm. That's fair yeah. enough. That's fair enough. I think. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, to be fair, the one thing with the, <laughs> I didn't even think we'd talk about the World Seniors for this this long. But hey, it seems uh, on brand for the World Seniors for it generally to go on for far too long. That, that seems to be. <laughs> how yeah, it goes that's the theme but it's yeah it's that thing where it's a nice event but it does feel like never has there been a snooker event that I've known that's changed the rules more frequently mm. in terms mm. of like it used to be everyone over 
ever, everyone over 45, then it was like, oh, it was people over 40. Then I it think was, it was oh, once like Ronnie and Higgins and Williams were eligible to enter. They thought, well, hang on a second, we need Williams, to... Williams won it, I think. Yeah, yeah, Williams won it 2017, I think, or something mm. like that, which was when it was... I don't know, it must have been over, over 40s because he wouldn't have been 45 back then, but... But yeah, it, it does feel like, uh, as you say, they take it too seriously. When it was like the Snooker Legends tour, it was about having fun. It was about mm. nostalgia. It was about, mm. frankly, it was a bit about taking the mick, about just being a bit silly, a bit stupid. Yeah. And now it feels like it's a with the champion of champions as the carrot. Where, I mean, you know, if they win, if they win this tournament, they get ten grand for winning it, and then twelve grand just for turning up at the champion of champions. That's a lot of money. So suddenly. It's not a bit of Which fun. Which is it's... why you get the top amateurs entering it. Yeah, well, you I know. Mean, you know, why I think, not? Uh, you know. Uh, well, I think someone like David Lilly, it was probably his highest ever pay packet in his career. So it's like, of course, of course, you'd enter. Do you know what I mean? Mm, because, mm, mm. and I think it spurred him on a, a pretty good season. Actually, yeah. I mean, genuinely, I think Michael White, David Lilly, the fact that there's there was four places for the the one year ranking list to get a tour card, and two of them went to amateurs, and that's. <laughs> That's well, that's yeah. you know that's good a good showing I think for them. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I think I'm that's sorry all. to everyone at all. <laughs> no, it's all right. The the seniors are too old to listen to podcasts. Uh, <laughs> no, they're not. They're fine. Please do keep listening. We we do like you really. And sorry, and Dennis. Captain Goodspeed's going to sponsor Wayne Cooper next year for the seniors. <laughs> You know, I've got nothing against the people that are in it. I just think I, I think they need a bit of help to make it more entertaining and more watchable because it it it, it was quite painful to watch. As massive snooker fans, you know, mm. if we aren't that interested, then who is going to be? Mm. Would yeah. be my argument. Well, apparently so. uh, John Parrott is going to play his last game in it this this week, I believe. Oh, he is said. he retiring? He said it's going to be his last competitive uh, appearance. Uh, so there we go, another one gone. I mean, John Parrott about five years ago, I've I, I seen some, some clips of him playing and he could still play to a pretty decent standard. It's like mm. Darren Morgan is, is a very good player um, still and hasn't been a professional for... A good yeah. fifteen years or so now. Yeah. Um. But still plays a lot of amateur snooker, and I, 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 I sort of don't understand why they don't try and Q school it. But maybe there's a for a certain level of amateur, there might be more money on the amateur game than the professional game. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, possibly. Because the amateurs are just getting drawn against Ronnie and Judd and Selby every time, and maybe they go, well, "I'd rather just win ten grand a year." On amateurs and actually win tournaments, yeah, then yeah. No, that's a good a, point. Be a pro who gets thrashed all the time and just waste your money on hotel and traveling, and you get called a numpty when you lose. Yeah, yeah, or riffraff. <laughs> or riffraff by s- certain people on podcasts. Who today your name I see is Captain Puggy. That's that's Joe's name today. <laughs> yeah, I was going to go with Lady Colin Chapman, but. Uh, <laughs> I thought that that might be a bit too far. <laughs> so, no, Captain so, Captain Puggy Captain suits Puggy. you. It suits yeah. you, mate. It suits yeah. you. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> the World Championship. We should talk about that. Really, that's why people are here for the Crucible chat. The real World Championship. Yeah. What did you? Because I saw you tweeted on the. Uh, I mean, spoiler alert if you've not seen it. Obviously, you turn away. Turn away now. I'm sure most snooker fans who listen to this will have seen it. I don't know why you'd be such a huge <laughs> snooker fan that you've not seen the final, but you uh, listen to the Crucible chat. Uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah. And but, you're um, this far into the video. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I saw you and you were nervous when uh, Trump was making his comeback, which I was uh, as well. Yeah. I, I I thought I thought you know. Because I was like, well, if Trump, if Trump won the final session, like he won that session, he would have won the title. Because mm. he, he won it six two or something. <clears throat> it's like if he did that again, he'd be champion. So I was, I was a bit nervous. Yeah, no, absolutely. I thought, um, I thought after the first day, you know, I think everybody thought it was was over. Um, I'd had, I'd not seen anything from Judd Trump throughout the tournament really that 
suggested he, he had any comeback in him. Um, but Ronnie just looked flat in the afternoon session. Mm-hmm. Um, I was more nervous about him losing and then that defeat, you know, causing him to really implode in terms yeah. of his future and his, uh, you know, form. I, I, do, I don't think he could have coped with a defeat like that. I think that was clear to see at the end of the match. Well, especially considering his record in finals. Mm. And in finals, people expected him to win. I'm thinking Jordan Brown, I'm thinking Fan Zheng He. You yeah. know, th- these, these matches, and even ones where he wasn't as much of a favourite, there's still finals where... You know, he went. He was. He's been hot and cold in finals. I think recently. Yeah, I mean, since since the start of twenty twenty, I think. Uh, you know, he's only won three finals, including Monday night, and mm. has probably been to something like eleven, twelve finals. So, it's not a great success rate for somebody like Ronnie O'Sullivan. Um, it's. Yeah, it's um, uh, it just made me nervous, really. I, I I just wanted him to win and you know yeah. have this a monkey off his back, so to speak. Um, I'm mean, just looking a, at his finals. But it's a, it's a strange monkey, isn't it, on his back? Because mm. he has never mentioned it. He never he op- you know outwardly in interviews he doesn't he never seemed to give a damn mm. and the bbc i know you have to build up a final you have to build up the story the narrative to make it exciting to the viewer but like when hazel kept saying like oh this is the record ronnie's been chasing for 30 years i mean firstly i was like well no technically well the record hey, wasn't even set then yeah it, technically the record was was set you know way before then and also, Ronnie's never mentioned it. So when at the end she was like, you must be so happy to have finally done this record. You've been chasing forever. And he was like, no, I don't really care. And I was like, yeah, he's always said he doesn't care. It's mm. it's, mm. it's mad. He, he's never gone. That's the, that's the one record I ever won. He's always, I think he's always known he's, you know, the best player. He doesn't need yeah. it to, to, to back it up. It's like if someone said that Cristiano Ronaldo has to win the World Cup. No, he doesn't. Do you know what I mean? He's still done plenty that people go yeah he's in the top level of players you don't need yeah, every yeah, single yeah. record to prove you're yeah. the best yeah no or, Fed- or, Fed- or Federer in tennis he doesn't necessarily have to have had the most ranking titles for mm. people to think he's the best like yeah 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 I think I think that was probably the, the argument um, you know Federer fans for so long were like well of course he's the best because he's got the most grand slams and now mm. now he's been overtaken people are like well I still think Federer is the best player ever mm. you know um, which I do personally you know that that's a that's a, a a chat for another day I suppose but you're right you know Ronnie O'Sullivan is widely regarded as the best player of all time even by Stephen Hendry himself yeah uh, and whether he'd won Four titles, five titles, six titles, seven, ten. People are still going to think that, and I think perhaps it's just silenced the the ones of you know. Oh, he's not a, he's not well. So, I've seen somebody ridiculous saying, "Well, he hasn't actually equaled uh, Hendry because Hendry was runner up in two finals." <laughs> Well, so, he has to lose one more final. So, league. you know, if we're thinking in Olympic terms, he's got seven golds and one silver, mm-hmm. uh, and Stephen's got seven golds and two silver, so Stephen's better. <laughs> For God's sake, man. So, people are so... Like, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, there's some people out there that'll, that still think Judd Trump is the, the best player of all time with one world title, so, you know... I mean, that, it, that is madness. Well... He's reached... I mean, he's got... Hasn't he got the same record in finals as Graham Dot? <laughs> and Peter Ebden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, um, I mean, that's what's, that's what's really interesting for me about, um, you know, obviously huge night for Ronnie and fantastic for all his fans and long-term mm. fans of the sport. But I also think for Judd Trump to have lost two finals, like, there's not many people who've lost more than two. Is it just Jimmy White and Higgins? Are they the only ones who've lost more than two, maybe? Like... Well, I mean, Ken's lost 
lost all three and 98, so that was two. So, yeah, not more than two. I guess Davis, but he only lost two. So, yeah, Hendry only lost two. Ronnie's only lost one. So what that could do, you know, the, the flip side of you saying what it could do for knocking Ronnie, I, I wonder what it would do for, for Judd, because he had a... I, they kept... Another thing they kept saying, which annoyed me on the BBC, they kept being like, Judd's been the best player for the past three years. And it's like, no, no, he's he was the best player for two seasons, but this yeah. season he's been yeah, yeah. average by his standards. Do you know what I mean? It's well, like, I mean, not you know, they, they didn't stop going on about how Robertson was the best player this season. And mm-hmm. then all, it, it's amazing how the narrative changes. Um, <laughs> you know, I think 2019, Ronnie was by far the best player that year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he obviously went out to Cahill, didn't he, in the first round of the... The, yeah, the world that championship. Was, that was bizarre. I think had he had he got through that match, he probably would have went on to at least feature at the one table. Mm. Um, but hey, you know uh, that's the way it goes. Twenty twenty, the COVID year, that was definitely Trump's year. Mm-hmm. And twenty twenty one to two has has been Robertson really, you know, yeah. in general. So, you know, I I wouldn't necessarily even say Trump's had had two great seasons, although he did win five titles. I mean, we we forget that there was about twenty events played that season. So, yeah, you know, and some of the tournaments that he won, like the Gibraltar Open, like the, you know, Riga Masters or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, some of them are ones that uh, the likes of Ronnie and Neil wouldn't even enter. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So already yeah. you've got a less competitive field. Yeah, I mean, Ronnie um, won five from... Oh, what, what, what was it? 2018-19. So he he won three from about ten events that he played. You know? Yeah. That's a, a, you know, a very good success rate. Um, we were talking about the finals before, just because I've got this in front of me. He has lost seven of his last ten finals, Ronnie. So, or ranking Ooh. finals, that is. Wow. Um, and two of the ones that he won were the World Championship final. So, I mean, you would take that, I suppose, wouldn't you? When, it, when, <laughs> I when, suppose, you've, when yeah. you've already got the ranking titles record, <clears throat> you would definitely take that. You'd go, yeah, I'd rather mm. win the big ones. Mm. Yeah, so he, he he lost the Northern Ireland Open twice to Judd Trump, 9-7 in the yes. final. Yeah. Uh, Scottish Open to Selby, 9-3. Jordan Brown, 9-8, Welsh Open. Higgins, mm-hmm. 10-3 in the Players' Championship. Tour Championship, 10-4 against Robble. And then he won the World Grand Prix this year, 10-8 against Robble. Then lost ten nine to Fan Cheng Zhi, and then of course won the World Snooker Championship. So, yeah, very interesting, very interesting. So he's been to sixty one finals in all in ranking mm. and won thirty nine out of the sixty one. So his win rate was a lot better earlier in his career. But I guess you would expect it. To dip a bit. Yeah, I mean, if you look at somebody like John Higgins. Yeah, when you know. he's, I mean, he's, you know, just a number of world finals he's lost in the past five years or ten years, yeah. whatever it is. You know, I mean, uh, if you look at John Higgins' his record in general, you know, since since 2011 when he won his fourth world championship, he's only actually won six more ranking titles. You know, it's, that's very surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow. He's got to plenty of finals, but has only won. Sorry, seven, seven titles. Um, when you compare that to maybe a Neil Robertson, how many has he won since? Uh, since then, he's won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen titles since Higgins won his fourth. So he's won. You know, more than double the events, which is... It's very interesting, isn't it? That was uh, this episode's edition of Counting with Mr. Hannard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you feel like you were in a maths lesson, kids? Did you enjoy it? <laughs> Where's Mark Williams, you see? Um, as oh, one... here we go. This well, is what we want. W- Mark Williams has won six titles since 2017, so... 
the, more, the more you look at the the statistics, the more I see Higgins as like number three in the class of ninety two, and that's ridiculous. Yeah, you know, certainly recent statistics. I'm not saying of all time. I'm saying nowadays. Mm. You know, um, but yeah, that one of the tournaments that. Um, Mark Williams won was the WST Pro Series, so perhaps we're being a little bit. Um, I believe he himself doesn't count in that one, does he? Yeah. <laughs> I think he said, "Yeah, it's not." He said, "Yeah, I know it goes to my record, but I don't count it as a ranking yeah, title." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, there you go. But um, no, it was good to see Ronnie win. Uh, you know, it was nice to see a bit of emotion. It was it was great to see his young family as well because uh, I mm-hmm. remember the images. You know, when he won in two thousand and eight in particular. Um, you know, he had his little ones there, and it was it was nice to see them them all grown up. Um, hmm. And his dad was there as well. I don't know if you've seen the video of his dad outside the event being quite rude to some student journalists but really uh, yeah um <laughs> i mean i'm not i'm not surprised uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah um but it was quite nice and you know for once i think judd trump was very gracious in defeat i, I think it was impossible not to be after embracing yeah. ronnie for a minute or, or, or it was, <laughs> yeah that was that was uh, an interesting it, moment it was bizarre because john virgo was still commentating on it <laughs> <laughs> it was like oh dear i mean yeah it was just just weird um <laughs> but yeah well, with ronnie i didn't know whether it was genuine or whether he was just doing a bit yeah. whether he just thought this would look really funny if i just hug him for a minute because judd didn't look comfortable no, Judge just kept like squirming away, but I, I feel like that's just the type of person Judd is. Yeah, yeah. I don't imagine Judd's the type of person who will hug his male friends. Just, uh, just, yeah. just you know. I imagine yeah. he's he'll shake their hands. He's that. He seems more that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think for him, he'll shake their like... hand and then you know get a wipe and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... But yeah, no, it was good. Um, I enjoyed it, and I was gutted for Mark Williams. Just a quick word for for him um, after the way he came back in that match. I think that would have been a, an exceptional final, Mark against against Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Ronnie would have almost. I don't think Ronnie would have had that flat session had it been Mark Williams. Uh, I don't know. No, but I also don't think Ronnie would have had that opening lead. I think no. Mark would have. Uh, play better than Judd did at the start yeah um, you know I think it would have gone close um, but hey it, you know That's I enjoyed I enjoyed uh, Rob Walker's stupid question to Mark Williams where Judd I enjoyed your through. your, uh, your video <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just, I just I got every single question that he asked Mark throughout this throughout the tournament and just made him say to every single one like oh I've had some stupid questions yeah. in that time Rob <laughs> but it really was just you know someone gets to the final and Rob goes do you think he can win it I was like well of course he bloody can what <laughs> yeah. you're not going to go no of course he can't it's literally got a 50% oh it was um, it was classic Rob Walker in that he's he's thought of like a cliche question and not actually thought about the situation or the context or whether yeah. it makes any sense whatsoever. I would have loved to have seen the, the boot on the other foot of if Mark had won and he mm. asked that question to Judd, what Judd would have said. <laughs> he might have just stormed off or something. <laughs> uh, uh, well, he might have just went, well, well, I've had some stupid questions in my time, Rob. <laughs> And you, like and you could have made a, a video on John Trump saying it instead, you know. That would have been good. Yeah. You know, um, I'm hoping all the players will start saying it to him whenever he asks. Yeah. Because really, then he'll stop asking the same cliche questions all the time. They kept showing the the Ronnie stat pack in the final. I don't know if you. Uh, if they you've did, seen yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. They're gonna have to update it now. Uh, well, yes, yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I don't think it will take them long. It's just a quick. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't think it shop. was particularly recent when they filmed that because Ronnie just looked completely different. So. Yeah, no, that's true. It, 
I mean, that's the thing. I do wonder how old these things are because. Um... Well, I think the stat packs are new. I just think the footage that they they like have in the background is. Yeah. You know, I think they just changed the overlays and whatever, but it's just weird. It's just weird. But then Eurosport Studio was weird this year. It was like a garage. You know. Did you? Uh, oh, did you see the Jimmy White? Thing? <laughs> I still don't know what he was talking about, though. This is the a- thing. Apparently, there was, or well, someone said they thought they might have heard someone moving stuff around in the studio when they were filming, and then it just cuts away, and then Jimmy comes in and goes, "Oh, I can't work in these effing conditions." <laughs> yeah, but he yeah. says the word. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, yeah. I've not said the swear word because yeah. I know Joe is strictly a PG oh, YouTuber. Oh no, it's it's fine. It's your channel, so you do what you want. I, I you like s- the impression. Can you say what he said? I'm not saying what he said. <laughs> We're going to get a first ever swear from Joe Hannard on YouTube. No, I can't say that because I'll end up having one of the kids clip that and getting <laughs> me fired. So I'm just not having it. <laughs> oh, that's fair enough, mate. That's all right. But yeah, basically, Jimmy was not happy with the Eurosport conditions. And uh, I mean, it was very funny. I found it really funny that well, some people. Just so many people were in up in arms about it. And I'm just like. You know, there's so much worse being said. I mean, you know, at least he didn't say something really horrific, you know. Yeah. That would have lost him his job, you know. But I just love the thought of Angle sat there, like, <laughs> while Jimmy's saying that. And Ramsey, like, not knowing what to, what to respond with. And, mm. oh, just, yeah. But, um... Yeah, it feels like something, even if it... It wasn't even if it wasn't accidentally broadcast, just something that Jimmy would say, and they'd all just like <laughs> look at him and nod politely, as yeah. if like, yeah. Oh, yeah, we we quite like we quite like we quite like getting paid just to talk about snooker, Jimmy. It's fine, Do you know. What I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um, what was I going to say? Jimmy was quite emotional about the whole Ronnie world mm. title. I don't know if you've seen. The, the sort of aftermath in the in the Eurosport studio, Jimmy was choked up about it. Oh, all. was he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, bless him. So, yeah, when Ronnie was in there talking oh. to them with his title there. So, I've but you seen, know, I've not seen him. I don't think um, World Snooker put an interview up with him. No, on I think it was YouTube. Eurosport. I think it was. Um, I think it was Eurosport's Twitter feed that did it. Okay, I'll have to look it up. Go and check it out, yeah. But um, yeah, did you did you enjoy the match? Did you? I thought it was really good. I thought, um, you know, I was actually. It's that thing where you. I either wanted Ronnie to win with a session to spare, just to really uh, push home how much better he is than everyone else. I thought that would have been quite cool. But then the fact that Judd made it a bit of a fight and then Ronnie still won it kind of just really shows the uh, like Ronnie's resilience that mm. he doesn't he doesn't crumble. Like <clears throat> maybe in previous years he might have done, but now he's clearly mm. got that strength where he just keeps going and he doesn't get put off by any of that stuff and he just goes right, it's fine. Let's keep going. Let's win this. And uh, yeah, it was it was so lovely to see him win it and it's um, going to be I mean straight away he was talking about win number 8 he's, he's got that confidence and he's he's got every chance of doing it really doesn't yeah, he yeah yeah I think if he keeps his focus you know and determination to um, to do it I think I think he can um, of course he can I mean he's won two of the last three world titles <laughs> you know mm. um which in recent memory only him and Mark Selby have managed that so mm. you know it's not it's not you know out of um, you know out of out of the question that he can go out out there and, and win it again next year and you know who knows I mean he could go on and win another three or, or whatever and take it to ten um, well yeah I mean he's already uh, you know breaking all, all records the oldest ever winner isn't he yeah um, yeah i mean he's, I believe... he's he said that he's gonna just play as long as he can really so well you'd hope so you don't want him just to stop you'd be like what are you doing mate just yeah. you can still 
you're still the best player. <laughs> but it's it's bizarre, like, you know, 10 years ago, to the day, pretty much, he took a year out of the sport. Yeah. You know? And well, no would have thought that 10 years later he would have won another three titles by then. Well, Judge was saying he might do the same. He was saying well, that before the championships, he was saying that. Um, yeah. I wonder whether Selby might do something like that because he's been struggling. And maybe it's a good idea for them, I don't know, to just focus on the big tournaments or... Um, well, uh, uh, Ronnie's doing something right. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think Robertson could take a leaf out of the, their books because Robbo plays in everything. Mm. Unless he turns up to the wrong Barnsley or, you know, <laughs> misses his flight from Luton Airport. Like, mm. you know, I think some of them just need to, to to take a bit of time. I think perhaps the schedule needs looking at of, mm. you know, particularly that middle bit of the season where you have the English Open, the UK Championship, the Scottish Open, the Northern Ireland Open... It's all in the champion of champions. It's all like back to back to back to back, and you know that's got yeah, to take its li- toll. They literally win the UK Championships, and they have to play in the first round the next day, or yeah. sometimes even a qualifier the next day. And yeah, I just most, think... of, most of the time, the player who wins it just drops out because they go, "No, I'm not doing that. I don't yeah. need to do that." Like, yeah. yeah, it's just, I think, I think maybe a week between tournaments. At it's the very really least, would, would. You know, you could even start the season a bit earlier. You know, we don't need to be going from May to August without a tournament, particularly. So, you know. Yeah. Started in July and and take it, you know, give, give them that gap. I think that would be a really good idea, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. One thing I, I've been thinking about is um, Mark Williams said that if he won it again, he said just to the, the press team, oh, you guys can decide what I do. So if you could choose anything for Mark Williams to do to celebrate winning a world title, considering he has come out naked and you know that's what he did last time and it went on a year-long boozer. So what, what would you choose for him to do to celebrate if he wins again? I think he should sit on the blue spot and eat a kebab. <laughs> uh, clothed or, or not? Uh, I'll leave that one up to you and your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> I think perhaps uh, he should do that. He should do it fully clothed in the in the normal world championships, and then for the final of the seniors championships, he should do the same, but this time with just a towel. <laughs> Round him. I like. I I quite fancy the idea of him having a uh, celebrity uh, boxing match with Rob Walker. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um. <laughs> No, I, I can't. I can't think of anything else. I'd, I'd like him to do. What about yourself? What have you? What have your well, thoughts been? <laughs> I think maybe it'd be nice if he uh, kind of had to. <laughs> if he's winning, when it comes to the last session, he has to play the last session in the towel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has to play the last frame in in the towel. Yeah, do yeah. do the clearance. What like that? <laughs> yeah. Oh God. <laughs> oh, there's a streaker in the crucible. Oh, it's Mark Williams. <laughs> <laughs> when he goes, when he goes to shake the ref's hand, that's when the towel falls down. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. Where's the towel going? Yeah. Oh Christ. Yeah. <laughs> We've had um, we have had a, a comment on both the episodes so far from a. I presume it's a gentleman called Alok. Uh, I don't know what where they're from. It could be Turkey. It could be something like that. It looks. I mean, possibly. it could. It could be. It could be Barnsley for all we know. We we we. You know. That's true. That's very true. No That's idea. True. No idea. Could, they're the two options: Turkey yeah, or Barnsley. You're either from Turkey or Barnsley. There's no in between. Um, but they said they 
They, after our last episode, they don't think David Lilly will win the ranking title. They didn't comment on your prediction, so they just... I can't remember what my prediction was. Well, clearly, they didn't even feel like they had to justify it by by acknowledging <sighs> it. All. So, um, they said, watch out for Lei Pei Fan, who I think is, uh, a, 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 well, at least one of the up-and-coming young Chinese players. Um, there's always a, a chance you might see another breakthrough, a bit like uh, the mm. two we've seen this year. Yeah. But, um... <clears throat> and he also said you two wouldn't be bad replacements for Virgo and Dennis so there Aww. we go Joe well, well we wouldn't be bad replacements we wouldn't be good replacements but <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be bad uh, I'll take it I'll take that's an, it that's half an endorsement yes um, I'm desperately looking down the the rankings to work out who on earth I've <laughs> backed to win a ranking title because if it happens <laughs> I want I want my I want my fame. Um, well, I mean, w- one prediction we do know you did is the uh, the Crucible contest. Oh yes. And I, I, uh, I. How many points did you get in that? Well, I, I noticed you'd done quite well in it. Um, I got. I think I got forty nine or something. I think. That's all I want to say. Crucible contest. Um, hang on a second. I did my podcast with Toby yesterday, and I looked it up. Um, mm. Who won? You or Toby? Me. But oh, you beat both of us. <laughs> yes, yes, I did, Joe. I got uh, fifty-two points. Fifty-two yeah. points, and, and you got a. Uh, 41. You may, 41. As, well not, may yeah. as well have not bothered, mate. Yeah. I, I was uh, impressed by uh, your predictions, to be honest with you. Well, um, I had. A, if it had been a Willow and a Ronnie final, I would have mm, been a, a, happy, you know, a happy guy. But I, did, I, caught, I got it very wrong in terms of I thought Trump would lose early, which you also did, and that's probably what sunk us both, really, in terms of... <laughs> it sunk the ship. Um, yeah. Yeah. I believe we said on the uh, the first episode. I don't, I don't think you'll remember saying this, but I'm quite sure you did. You said that uh, whoever wins, the other person would give them 147 pounds. Well, all right. Okay. Okay. I, I believe you said that, and I believe the listeners will definitely back me up. Well, I'm sure Alok um, will 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 confirm that, ratify <laughs> it. Um, I mean, I'm glad you didn't add an extra three zeros to that. Um, you know. That, no, that was only if one of us won it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's weird. I don't yeah. think anyone gets anything for actually winning that. I just think like a thousand people enter, and then the winner gets bragging rights, which is a. Uh... Where's the guy that runs it all? He's got his millions, you yeah. know, from all the advertising revenue he must get. <laughs> he must get tons from it. Yeah, I mean, if I was someone like WST or um, Betfred, I would be like, yeah, we should get behind this and actually do it as a thing and again they need more fan engagement and there should be something like that and there should well, be a snoo- snooker fantasy league do that yeah absolutely oh, you for a second then are you back yeah so did you I'm back um, no I, I absolutely agree I think a, a sort of fantasy I mean I don't think a, a, a fantasy snooker league would work necessarily I do think a predictions game would be in there like maybe even just predicting the high break or whatever mm. you know um, if you predict a one three nine, you know I, I just think it would it would be really good but yeah yeah um, you know we talked about it at length last time didn't we of you know things that they could do um, what did you think right. the shop of the, the shot of the championship I mean, I mean again, just just as a, a general thought about the format, I always find it weird that that's not. That's what I was thinking the other day. There should be an actual prize for who wins short of the championship. You know, they should give the player a prize, and I thought of this the other day. There should be a, um, you know, how there's like the uh, Premier League Golden Glove for most clean sheets. And like the golden boot for Tom Cox, there <laughs> yeah, should be yeah. there should be yeah. a tournament for whoever makes the most most centuries or whoever yeah. wins the most matches. There should be a whoever a concedes big... the least amount of points. Or whatever. Yeah, you should give them a golden yeah. cue or something like that, or yeah. a, a, a yeah. big shiny ball. I don't know. Just... 
<laughs> a big shiny pocket. <laughs> yeah, something something they'd really want. Something nice. I, or I, I just a, a big it. shiny replica of Mark Williams sat on the blue spot <laughs> eating the kebab. <laughs> All the players would want that, you know. That, that that would mean more than any triple crown event. Yeah, they'd they'd have to wear a badge saying that they'd they'd got that. <laughs> oh dear. Mm. Yeah, I think there should be a. Um, I mean, they uh, do end of season awards, but I agree with you. I think it'd be quite nice to have some silly awards like that. Yeah, or, or just <clears> like you know, some sort of. Uh, thing that goes this is a player who had the most centuries this season I think would uh, mm. kind of make it more se- exciting for going like oh Kyrie's on 54 and Ronnie's just got his 55th and it'd be like yeah. okay there's there's something exciting there it's not just yeah. like yeah yeah no it's a good idea it's a good idea again yes. are you listening to World Snooker we are saving this sport <sighs> I know they're just never going to listen to us Tom but, we're, um, we're going to be barred we're going to be blocked but um, I don't have yeah I don't have many thoughts on the shot of the championship. What were your thoughts? I presume you've you've got some. Uh, well, are you annoyed? I'm not annoyed. Um, I don't really know why John Parrott gets to pick the top three. Um, <laughs> well, surely Virgo should. He's the uh, the trick shot man. Well, yes, and you know they they picked. Uh, I mean, one of the the shots of the championship was the black off the spot that Neil Robertson potted for the one four seven. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the shots of the championship. He's got his prize because he's got the high break prize that he's. Sh- well, he shares it with Graham Dot, I think, because yeah, Graham yeah. Dot got one in the. But yeah. that's his prize for that. that. That's it's a black off the spot. That's never. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. But... yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was Mark Williams's yellow where he punched it in and out of uh, or behind the black and round in and out of bulk onto the green. Um, when he was coming back against Trump, and hmm. you know, it was a very good shot. I, don't get me wrong, but um, I, I do just find it funny that it was just picked by John Parrott randomly. You know, it was like when when Hazel showed them in the afternoon. She was like, "Oh, and I believe uh, John Parrott will be choosing his top three in this evening session." And it's like, "Wow, can't wait what? for that." <laughs> Why is it not like a public vote or, yeah. or something? I, mean, I think they had a couple of years where you voted on the website and whatever. But this is mm. why they should have Snooker Pulse back. Yeah, bring yeah. back... We're the only people saying it, bring back yeah, Snooker Yeah, I mean, Pulse. maybe I'm going crazy because you don't remember it. and you know, No, I don't. I uh, think I'm going to go it. for it. Snooker, Snooker Pulse, BBC. Let's see. I remember uh, Power see. Snooker. That was the future of Snooker. Yeah, Pulse Vote, BBC Sport. 18th of April 2011, but it's just an ominous page now. Hang on, is there a chat function on this? There is a chat function. I'm going to send you a link to this, and you can go to the ominous page. Okay, new message from Puggy, Captain Puggy. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. (laughs) Thanks, Puggy. Okay, what is this? It's just an empty page. Yeah, it's ominous. Uh, for some reason, the top story says, "Watch the World Championship: O'Sullivan versus Higgins in the semi-finals." <laughs> and I it mean, says look it's at li- this. I mean, this was the second link on Google. It says it's live. I don't think these semi-finals are live. What's the second link on Google for snooker pop. <laughs> what on earth? I mean, is the, it, what? This is the old fi- BBC website. This is 2011 Stoker, isn't it? This yeah, because it it's the same year as the Pulse, so there must be some... Yeah, the Pulse Live vote, it's on the related internet links. Oh, wow. But it's Flukes, some... fun and frivolity at the Crucible. What's this article going to be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a video from 2011. Can we watch it? We can, it's Stephen Entry. Oh, wow. I mean, that's something I'm going to be watching. Oh, later. Dominic, I mean, I, I, I was at that match. That Were one you? with Dominic Dale, yeah. Oh wow, was it uh, was it a good match? Did you enjoy it? What were your thoughts? Oh, well, I, I, I mean, it was it was again, it was Ronnie versus Dale. It was back in the days where I don't don't know if you remember, but the top sixteen was set for the whole season. It wasn't you know, and the rankings yeah. only changed after the World Championship. Yeah, um, they didn't have they didn't have the rolling yeah. money dropping off and stuff. I think they did have that, but it only took effect after the. After the end of the season, if you get me, um, 
Yeah. So yes, yeah, so if you you were the number one player for the whole season, weren't you? Basically. Yeah. 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 And there was provisional rankings, which were what mm. we've got now. But um, yeah, so you could you you could look at the Crucible and and see when the world number 13 or whatever which I think Ronnie might have been back then I can't really remember but um, mm. you could see when they would play so we booked tickets for the first session to Ronnie and um, oh, okay. and then uh, Dominic Dale qualified so he it was it was him versus Ronnie um, and he won 7-2 that session and I remember he had I remember being uh, backstage at the Crucible well not backstage but uh, you know waiting in the lobby uh, the foyer at the Crucible and mm. Betfred uh, you know the sponsors there was a guy with a microphone and he was like oh and we're, we're increasing the odds to if Ronnie makes a 147 in this session to 147 to 1 or something like that and Oof. you know uh, and people would go up and, and buy that and stuff and I remember distinctly that in the merchandise store there was World mm. Snooker at WSC 2011 oh really because had just come out yeah yeah. Did you did you buy it from the Crucible? No, I didn't cuz I'd already oh. I'd already bought it of course, but um yeah, uh that, that that was that's a crazy memory that's just popped up really. And I remember the, the, this is awful, but uh, I don't think they would get away with this in in 2022, but um they had they had lots of Michaela Tab merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Um. Wow. Okay. Um, I mean, was it? Was it? What well, we not, here? probably we... not as as <laughs> what you're talking... thinking right now. I'm but... thinking. Well, I'm thinking similar uh, things with her on the blue spot. To be honest, <laughs> is that what you're talking about? Like, or <laughs> no, not quite. Or, that also bad, but... eating. Also eating a kebab. Hopefully. Um... <laughs> well, uh, yes. Um... <laughs> Let's um, let's move on very swiftly. Now, there, there's stuff like coasters, but her looking, you know, seductively at the camera and whatever, and perhaps wearing a low cut top, and you know. I'm gonna have a quick uh, look on eBay, <laughs> see if. I'm just oh, maybe curious. I'm and... misremembering it, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, Joe. Was he? Were these your teenage dreams, mate? That you uh, were like. Uh, I'm safely saying no, but. Um... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh no, there's dear! No, there's nothing on nothing on eBay. I think you've made this up. Uh, I'm I'm looking for Michaela Tab merchandise. Okay. How many um, people have done that today as well? <laughs> I mean, I suppose most of it won't be on sale anymore. But I mean, you know, there was stuff like this, which you know, she's pretty much on the blue spot. You know. Oh my god! Yeah, it's it's Michaela. I mean, it's like she's gone, you know, paint me like one of your French Dominic Dales or something. Like, I mean, there's another one where she's, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Literally sat on the table. Like, yeah, I, there was one where the short of um, oh, I forget her name now, but it, you know the the female referee that um, did the semi-final this year. I always forget her name. I can't... It's like Dasa, um, Dasa Slava or something, isn't it? Or, uh, yeah, De- De- Desi something. Yeah, De- Desi. Um, um, and they, they they had, like, a, a, a picture of her and she was, like, holding a red ball like this. And it's just like, hmm. I don't think they're going to get Terry Camilleri to do that, you know? I mean, I hope they do. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, some equality, like... <laughs> You know, well, it's but... like when they uh, when they first had female <laughs> players in the snooker shootout, and they had uh, Rianne Evans, who was the world number one, and Emma Parker, who was uh, the women's number seven, but just happened to be nineteen year olds and quite conventionally attractive. And it's like that's why you've chosen her. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah, you, yeah. So you're saying we're doing this for representation, but also you're. Ah, uh, I mean, you know. It's, uh, uh, uh... That, yeah. that was the shootout you were talking about there, wasn't it? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I found it quite awful, really. The, the, the crowd and how they were treating the, the female players, and, and even mm. Rianne, you know, they, they treat her really badly. And yeah. it's, it's kind of awful that, that nothing has ever said about it, and nothing's ever done about it. Yeah. But yeah. Um, 
so yeah, that that was one of my memories from the from the Crucible uh, Tuck Shop, if you like. Um, tuck Shop. <laughs> was there Makeda to have sweets as well here? Yeah, like, well, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, can we find a picture of Stuart Bingham lying on the table? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I'm sure we can. Just going to um, Google Stuart Bingham. <laughs> lying on table. Snooker on the BBC. Ask the experts. Ask. Oh, I mean that that page isn't found anymore. Uh, Snooker loopy remembered. Uh, <laughs> players to watch. Oh, players to watch. Twenty eleven. Five players to watch. Can you predict the five players to watch? Oh, <laughs> you will not. You will not guess one of them. Trust me. Uh, so I mean, I, try and think so, back to who was good back then. Oh, well, so they're all players who are top names. They aren't. Yeah. Like... Well, not all of them, but three out of the five were very much top players back then. One of them had a very, very good tournament, and one of them has never done anything. Uh, Other than something that broke a lot of people's hearts this year. Oh, uh, Judd Trump. So Judd Trump, um, yeah, he was a player that had a very, very good year, but actually wasn't a top player back then. <laughs> He'd only uh, just won the China Open. That was his first final, wasn't it? In 2011? It was his first... World final, he won the China yeah. Open. Yeah, his bookmakers' odds were thirty-three to one that year. Wow. Uh, well, Ronnie, I suppose, will be on that. Yeah, list. Ronnie was number two on the list. So, uh, all eyes will be on the three-time world champion, having slipped to tenth in the rankings after a miserable season. What fireworks will the rocket dish up this year? Talk of early retirement never goes away, but the former mm. number one will hardly be buzzing with confidence, having lost in the first round in his last four tournaments. A fading star or a legend ready to reignite his skills is the stage set for this unpredictable 35-year-old to claim a fourth world title ten years after his first. Verdict from the experts, there is no doubt facing O'Sullivan is not the fearful event it once was. Dominic Dale, world number 32 and first round opponent, says, I'm playing Ronnie at a good time. He hasn't done a lot in the last six months. Dormant for half a year. Uh, could, did you hear me there, by the way? Or did it freeze again? I did, yeah. That that will, that has aged poorly, that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and did you know he plays equally well with his left and right hand and made the fastest maximum 147 break? Uh, on record at the 1997 <laughs> World Championships uh, in a time of I didn't know, but somehow I've missed seconds. that. I've, I've completely missed that. I've been watching Stuka for decades. Uh, yeah. You never mention it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so those two... Um, I mean, Higgins, is he there? He's not. He's not. Uh, Selby? Nope. Uh, Robertson? <laughs> yes, Robertson was the defending champion. Course, so yeah. should, should we hear what they said about him? Yep. The Thunder from Down Under has had a wobbly season since becoming the first Australian to win the world title. Since bagging the World Open crown in Glasgow last September, the 29-year-old has failed to go beyond the second round of the last three ranking events. Stinky form in anybody's book. <laughs> 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 has become a dad bracket he has a baby boy 11 months old hindered the rise of Robertson will the pressure of arriving in Sheffield as world champion prove too much verdict three big motivations why Robertson will still have the fire in his belly one to become the first first time winner to defend the world title two to become the agony uh, of his country's ashes lost to overcome the uh, agony of his country, Sasha's life. Oh, uh, and number three, to regain the world number one spot, back off John Higgins. 
Um, Even though Higgins isn't in this yeah, list. Yeah, forget the jittery form. He did the same thing last year, and just knowing he has the skills and temperament to come through the 17-day marathon should still make him a very dangerous animal. Think Roaring Croc, not a misfiring <laughs> kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did he fare? Lost in the first round, 10 8 to emerging talent, Judd Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Um, so that's else? three of the five. Um, <clears throat> who could be someone who's not done anything? Was. Um... You'll never get it. Mm, that's a challenge, I like it. Let's go. For Dave Harold. <laughs> <laughs> no, right right sort of you know ranking. Mike, Mike Dunn. <laughs> no. No. A lot younger. Pete. Oh, um I think possibly was I mean born nineteen eighty two, so you know, it, he's forty now I suppose, but um Oh, like uh, Andrew Higginson or something like that? His name is Andrew. Andrew Paget? Yep. Yeah. That's the one. One to watch, <laughs> Andrew Paget. This Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I mean, thank God we had the experts on hand because yeah, they mean, nailed they nailed that, didn't they? I mean, here's. Um, can I show you the? Can I share my? I can share my screen. Hang on. Yeah. You can see the see picture this. of him. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not giving you any more spoilers of what's, what, what I'm going to read. <laughs> this crucible right. debutant has nothing to lose. Only two years ago, he lost his place on the Pro Tour and now is set for the sport's biggest stage in his first major ranking event. So this was the first thing that he'd ever qualified for. Wow. The player yeah. known as the Welsh Wizard has a oh, whole... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I definitely knew that. Yeah. has a whole bag of skills and he's got practice partner Mark Williams to thank for many of those now, I don't think them, don't them two get on anymore do they no is this guy basically a, a, a failed <coughs> Jackson Page then, yeah possibly uh, Paget has uh, had to come through qualifying uh, four, four qualifying matches which included a 10-9 win over Nigel Bond in the last, last 64 coolness Few people are given. Oh, yes. what? Few Did people. Rob Walker write this? This is nonsense. Uh, it was compiled by BBC Sports' Mark Ashenden. There you go. Who will be tweeting from the World Championship? Hang on. Let me see if I can get his uh, account. Oh my goodness. Huh. I'm so con. Oh my god. I mean, look at look at look at this. I have no idea what you sent me here. I don't know if I trust this. <laughs> New message from Puggy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Puggy's never let me down before. BBC Sport Mark. It's loading. I have no idea what this is going to be. <laughs> what? <laughs> Barbara Boehm Senza, beautician from Memphis. <laughs> yeah, so I'm guessing it is, his Twitter handle just became unactive and or so he someone... got hacked <laughs> yeah yeah it, yeah I, I don't think that is Mark but, um... but anyway I will keep reading uh, few people are giving him any hope but he's just delighted to be there freeze or a breeze verdict when he made his tv debut at the six reds world championship in december 2009 the mc mm. needed to rifle through his notes to find his name <laughs> oh is, was that rob walker please tell uh, me it was uh, probably not in thailand let's be honest um, oh. <laughs> will Paget be be the forgotten man or are there more shocks in store he said in in the world's build-up even if i lose 10 nil i can always say i played at the crucible a relaxed Welsh amateur champion, though, uh, could turn out to be a very dangerous beast. Wow. Was he a dangerous beast? Did well, he, did he, how did he fare? Did he, how do you, did so, he win the tournament? Did he win? I don't know. <laughs> how do you think he fared? Where do you think he got to? I imagine he lost in the first round about 10-3 ten, ten or something. No, 10-7 to Jamie Corp. Okay. So there you go. Um, and there's one more. One more for you to guess. 
two in here. Is it going to be someone else really weird, like Paul Davison? Or no, no, no. It's it's somebody that got the semi-finals this year. Oh, oh, this year. Yeah. Oh, is it Willow? Mark Willow. Yeah. And that oh, year, yeah. actually, funnily enough, um, this Welsh dragon is back roaring again. A world rank and a forty-seven two years ago, and rumours of hanging up his queue were rife. Not anymore. Williams opened this season with victory in the first event of the Players Tour Championship before nibbling further success in the, <laughs> in the first <laughs> training event of 2011 in the German Masters. Losing 10-9 to John Higgins in the UK final after leading 6-2 and 9-5 may still be haunting Williams, but now's the time to look ahead and start preparing for an assault on securing the title he won last one eight years ago. It was only eight wow. years back then. Oh. Uh, verdict. Nice. It's been a season of more ups than downs, and his form is overall pretty hot. Uh, Williams may have lost 5-4 to Stephen Lee in the first round of the China Open, but four wow. centuries in that defeat suggests there's nothing wrong with his smooth left-handed cue and arm. Can the player known as the Sprog... <laughs> Who calls him that? What? I've never heard him called that before in my life. The Sprog? <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm just going to Google Mark Williams Sprog. So you... This guy's just made it up. <laughs> oh dear. Um... Oh Christ. Can the player known as the Sprog <laughs> add to his 2000 and 2003 world titles? Never be fooled by that relaxed demeanour. He'll be bang up for this, despite facing compatriot Ryan Day in round one. How did he fare? Still in the tournament. <laughs> That's what it says. Oh my goodness. I can't believe this stuff about Roddy. That has aged very poorly, hasn't it? Here we go. Uh, so this is from a tweet exchange from 2014 between uh, the Twitter user Snooker Backer and Mark Williams, ah, who's tweet, tweeted Mark Williams going, interesting nick, nick, nickname, the second one, and Mark Williams in all capitals has gone, Sprog? <laughs> 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 so so he doesn't remember being called Sprog either, eh? Well, well no, later on he says, they all called me Sprog for years <laughs> in Bargo to then gradually went to Willow. So they did call him Sprog, but he, he writes it in all capital. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I mean, this that was a classic article. I mean, uh, let's just say Sprog is not on his current Wikipedia yeah, page. Yeah, I might have to I'll put that into the, into the chat. You can have a read of that later. Bit of bedtime reading for you. Right, let's see if there's any more good art, uh, articles on there. Uh, <laughs> I've looked up the word Sprog on Wikipedia. It says it's the son of the uh, character Mad Max. Yeah. It's a piece of software. Mm. It's a Sierra Club summer training program for youth. And the final thing <clears> does <throat> say Sprog, nickname for snooker player Mark Williams. What? <laughs> I can't believe that. But I've, I mean, we've followed Snooker for decades. Like, have you ever heard him called Sprog? I've never heard him called Sprog, no. Was it in, like, the 90s or something mad? Or... Mm. Mm. <laughs> BBC Snooker on Twitter. And this account is no longer tweeting. Yeah. Boo. Boo. What is, um... <clears throat> what, what is your favourite... Um... <clears throat> snooker nickname? Um, Apart from Sprog, of course. I mean, that's definitely going in the title of this podcast. I think... Uh, I, I, have you ever heard Ronnie called the Essex Exocet? Or whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Imagine someone called him that and him just going out, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, what? <laughs> Yeah. What did you just call me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, what, what, uh, I mean, to be honest, on fire. Stephen Maguire is is quite a good one. And just but don't to, they call him? They call him the, the Maverick. Maverick well, now. Rob does now, yeah. But um, I prefer it on fire. Yeah, on fire, Stephen Maguire. Um, 
Oh, the milkman. <laughs> That's a good one. I like the milkman. I like the sheriff. Of I like Pottingham the the well. angry father. Yeah, the sheriff of Pottingham is a very good one. Um, the angry farmer's a weird one because I, I swear they announced him as that, and then Virgo this year was like, I don't know why they call him now. He's not that angry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! I mean, I re- I remember, uh, you know, Ball Run Bingham. I think mm. Virgo always used to say, "Well, Ball Run means like you know he's powerful, like um, what? rather than actually, you know, he's having powerful. the run of the ball." Yeah, yeah. Well, like he's the Incredible Hulk or something. <laughs> well, I mean, he could be that as well. To be fair, but. Um, <laughs> Virgo just looked at him and gone, he looks a bit like an actual bull. That must be what it is. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not B-U-L-L, is it? It's, <clears throat> it's bull. It's B-A-L-L. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's... Um, yeah, it's funny. But, uh, I mean, that reminded me, I don't know if you remember when we talked about the World Snooker Championship 2003 manual that night. That went. We we will have to do this as a uh, <laughs> this we'll is... do this as as a feature for a podcast. I think we should do one every 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 episode. Or oh, dig up an old article or poorly aged uh, snooker descriptions. That's a good idea, and also maybe I'll I I also think if if we do like one each, so one of us gets something like an old article or an old mm. thing for the manual, and another one of us, I because I might literally just have a big old. Google deep dive and find out like a list of all the players who've been touted as a future world champion. <laughs> and we can analyse how close yeah. they got to actually uh, becoming a future world champion. I mean, do you, do you want to hazard a guess at some of the results of uh, the 2011 championship just since you know we're there? Um, well, I believe uh, Andrew Paget um, got all the way to the final because he was one to watch. <laughs> yeah. So he went out to Jamie Cope. Um, we know that Judd beat Robertson. Um, I presume did. I mean, who did Ro- Ronnie beat Dale? You told us that. Yeah, ten two. Um, who else would be in the top sixteen? Then Barry Hawkins. I well, presume. okay. So I'll, I'll I'll go through. So John Higgins. Who did he beat? Oh, was it a qualifier? Yeah. Rob Milkins. No, Rob Milkins didn't qualify that year. Rob Walker. Rob Walker beat John Higgins by 10 points. <laughs> no. Um, brutal, no. brutal victory for Rob Walker. <laughs> no, he beat Stephen Lee 10 5. So I would have forgotten Stephen Lee ever existed. Yeah. Even though there are people on yeah. Reddit who occasionally go, Do you think he's going to come back in 2024? And I'm like, Mate, he's going to be like 51. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, he, he might do. I mean,. Why not? But uh, do you, I'll, 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 I'll read a list of the qualifiers um, that got through. I think you'd be quite surprised at this list. So Stephen okay. Lee, yep, uh, Jimmy Robertson, yep, Martin Gould, okay, uh, Rory McLeod beat Ricky Walden ten six. Goodness me, um, Mark Poor King, Ricky. Mark King, okay, Matthew Stevens, mm-hmm. Peter Ebden. Dominic Dale, Joe Perry, Barry Hawkins. He was a qualifier. In 2011, he was, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's very surprising. Uh, Jamie Burnett. Jamie Burnett. Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's a name. Ryan Day. Okay. Uh, Dave Harold. <laughs> Dave Harold, yes. I knew he'd pop up somewhere. <laughs> Marcus Campbell. Oh my god, these are proper names. Like yeah. they're they're proper like snooker players who are just like they make you think of your dad or something. Do you know what I mean? Like they're they're not the flashy or cool ones, but they're the yeah. ones who'd like they'd buy you a pint when you're sixteen. Go there, you're allowed to, and you'd be like, "Cheers, mate." Uh, Andrew Paget and Joe Trump. Yep. They were the qualifiers that year. Top sixteen. <laughs> See if you can name the top sixteen or as many as as you can. <clears throat> well, it would be. Ronnie yeah. Higgins. Yeah. Robertson. Yeah. Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, Murphy. Yeah. 
Ding. Mm-hmm. Uh, Selby. Mm-hmm. Maguire. Yep. Oh, halfway. Here we go. Oh, God, I've said the obvious ones now, though. That's, <laughs> this is... Okay. Um, who else would be... Oh, was... No, Davis was gone by then, wasn't he? But he was on the front end for video game. Mm, no, I don't think he was in top 16. Um, was Bingham top 16? No, didn't. Uh, oh, no, he was. He was. He was. That's oh, like. good old. Him yeah. and his ball like power. There we go. Yeah. I can't believe he uh, was in the top 16 in 2011. I can't, I, I'm shocked at that. Well, I think he was like an underachieving top 32 and then an underachieving top 16 player until he finally started winning stuff and then suddenly, mm. you know. Um, oh, what about Graham Dot? Yeah. Okay. Um, There's Hendry. one, Hendry, yeah. yeah. That one needs that, 12. Yeah. Wow. Mark Allen. Yes. <gasps> oh my God, this is so tense. What's the clue <laughs> you were going to give me? I need to get them all. Um. Okay. So, Ali Carter. Yes. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my so god. I think you're missing two, three. You're missing three. So you must have got thirteen so far. Um. Oh. So one of them we've already mentioned. Uh, got beat by Rory um, McLeod. Oh. Um. Ricky Walden. Yes. And. Uh, the other one we talked about quite a bit in the last podcast. As David being... Lilly. No, it wasn't David Lilly. <laughs> You've just ruined it. No, um, no, I know it wasn't. He wasn't. As a, a, as a player that, you know, retired a few years ago and we thought it was a bit of a shame. Oh. Uh, Alan McManus? No, no. Oh, I've ruined it now. It's Joe Swale? No, like a younger player that retired. Jamie Cope? Jamie Cope, yeah. Oh, yeah, Joe Swell, okay. goodness me, what a player. There we go, yeah. Um, one more. Um, 2011, I'm going to go with... I've only got one life left on these rules I've given myself. I don't know why. Contested in the final of the Masters that year. Ooh. In perhaps one of the most viewed worldwide figures, I would imagine. Wembo? No, not Wembo. Oh, I've lost. Marco Fu. Oh, no! <laughs> of course it was Marco Fu! <laughs> oh. Yeah. Bucker. It's all because he's not been on the tour. I've forgotten he existed. That was a pretty good effort, though. I can't believe you got so many of them. Well, next next episode, Joe, I'm going to choose a year. And we're yeah, see how no, many I'm up get. for that. I think that would we'll be keep great. A, we'll keep a running total. This would be good for Yeah, no, that would be, that'd be great. I mean, what was that, 14, 15? That you got with, with you know, two wrong answers. And, and you know, oh, I, I led you down the garden path with McManus and Swale, so... Yes, you did. That was your fault. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I that's want to know right. if there's a players to watch from 2010 or something. I mean, that's going to be exciting. <clears throat> we, well, that's what we should do, actually. We should, because uh, the, uh, the internet is one thing, but if we got some of the old, like, snooker scene magazines, Ooh. you'd get properly old stuff of, like, you know, when Ronnie was, like, 17, and, you know, yeah. and you see properly old things about, we expect really big things from Joe Swale or... <sighs> Or people we've never heard of because oh, they didn't actually. Yeah, that yeah. would be amazing. Or uh, Wayne Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's on the up, mate. He's coming back. <laughs> yeah, uh, just it's just bizarre. Um, I mean, nobody's listening anymore. If they are, I mean, they, they're being told we do this in our podcast. We always get them to say a little phrase. A funny mm. phrase if they got to this point of the video. So we've had Snooker Loopy, we've had There's Vicky, um, we've had Catch the Pigeon. Um nice. Yeah, so I think I think you need to come up with a catchphrase, Tom. Uh, of if people got to this point of the podcast and listened to our ramblings. 
What do they need to put th- in the comments? I think they should, for this episode, they should say, uh, Andrew Padgett is one to watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's a, that's a cracker. That's and a I cracker. don't think anyone would have said that without getting to this point, so... Mm. Mm. Yeah, I can hear. Uh, I mean, I've just popped the seniors on to see how it's going, and I can see uh, Will Talat is two 0 up against uh, Maria Catalano. Um, um, isn't she Ronnie's cousin or something? No idea. I, I believe I've read on Wikipedia. Perhaps. Um, but yeah, uh, Hendry's commentating on it, which is a bit bizarre. <laughs> Uh, he's playing in the event. He shouldn't be commentating on it. Unbelievable! He's copying Jordan yeah, Murphy. Yeah, yeah. He mustn't have any uh, aspirations. <laughs> well, we saw that because he didn't enter qualifying for the World Championships. Well, yeah, yet yeah, got another two-year tour card. But I think I read the other day, and I don't know whether it was just someone writing the wrong thing on Wikipedia or whatever. But I think I saw there's going to be 130 players. Okay. So presumably the. Ken and Stephen will be additional too. Um, so they might not actually even get in every single tournament. I mean, if they, if they even bloody enter, they probably won't. But I mean, Ken will. Uh, Ken tends to play yeah, in everything, yeah. but... Um, but it does mean, I think people won't be able to say they're taking someone's call card. Well, because it'll be Steve Mifsut on the... Uh, that that won't, <laughs> won't be yeah, taking up be his tour like card that. or... Yeah. There's always there's always one at the bottom who's never entered anything, which mm. is bizarre, really. You'd think that, I mean, again, not for us to say how they should run it, but I think if you've got a two year tour card and they mentioned that they should have to enter a certain amount of events, otherwise it's kind of a bit of a joke for mm. players who do want to be on tour, like because mm. that's the thing about you know, I mentioned earlier Michael White and David Lilly. If there was there was only 122 players this year, if it was 128, they'd have both already been on tour. Mm. I don't know why they didn't have 128. They had six top ups for each event, which is like, what? Why? What? I, I don't know. I have no idea what's mm. right. Mm. Should give one of us a wild card. Just for the shootout. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. I mean that would be a great idea to get somebody just completely left field in for the shootout. Well, I've always thought, you know, um, I don't, I don't know if you've ever followed WWE, but do you know the uh, the Royal Rumble? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I've heard of it. I've never ever followed it, but yeah. Well, the the general thing of that is that it's where like thirty wrestlers enter, and the winner is the last person in the ring. And every year they do have like cameos, so mm. you know there'll be people who are never going to win it. They'll be like, oh, it's Hulk Hogan twenty years after he used to wrestle, and he'll come in and get eliminated within one minute, or mm. maybe there'd be like Johnny Knoxville, like a celebrity who just turns up, and so they have these weird kind of wild card entries. <laughs> it's that John just... Virgo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're just for the fans yeah. to go, oh yeah. my God, it's that person. So <laughs> yeah. I've always thought they could do that in the shootout, yeah. get the... Uh... Dead, you know, just put yeah. Dennis Taylor in it. Just put John Virgo yeah. in it. Just, just put. Yeah, I mean, can you Tony imagine Drago. Dennis running around the table with ten seconds of shot? Like, you I mean, know, people would love to see that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, put we Rob would Walker, love to see it. Put Rob Walker in it, like literally mm, anyone mm, to do with snooker. Mm. No, absolutely. Mm. He's got the good speed. It's Joe Hannard, and out you come. Yeah. Might put a couple of balls. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were getting Dennis Taylor. I'd fancy your chances. Well, <laughs> uh, depends if his safety game was good, good, too good for me. Yeah. Right, I think um, we're almost at the 19 minute, 19 minute mark. Maybe we should think about wrapping this up by yes. saying, um, do you have any uh, highlights of the last season or lowlights or things like, aside from just a world <clears> championship, <throat> maybe, like anything else where you go? That was a really good moment, or that was a weird moment, or just anything, anything at all that springs to mind from the snooker season gone by. No, no, I'm only joking. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was like the uh, the Yan Bing you Tao moment, wasn't you, it? You absolute git. Like. <laughs> it was like the Yan Bing Tao moment. I don't know if you saw that where, um, yeah, they asked him about Mark Selby and. I mean that was a pretty <laughs> a highlight. Um, yeah, they ask him if he, if Selby is an inspiration. He just goes, 
No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. I mean, a highlight for me was seeing Marco Fu back on tour um, for mm-hmm. the last the 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 last tournament. Um, I enjoyed seeing um, Rian Evans and um, Nagonyi on on the on the tour. So that yeah. was really good. Um, Ronnie back in the winner's circle. I think that was a big, big thing, really. Um, yeah. Higgins, you know, slimming down. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was bizarre seeing him the first tournament of the season because he looked so weedy. and um, Yeah, I thought he was ill. I was, yeah. I was yeah, 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 yeah. and then he yeah. went, I've just been to spin class. And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. OK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the probably the best match of the season for me was that Robertson Williams master semi-final I don't know if you remember that yeah um, I was gutted when Williams messed up the uh, the swerve at the end I think honestly one of my highlights is having uh, was having Hazel back um, for the world championships yeah. I know she was there last year as well but it is always just great to, to have her back so mm. yeah I mean hopefully um a sign of things to come really it was nice to see some new ranking event winners this year Joe Perry winning the, the, the Welsh Open that was quite cool well Rob, um, Rob Milkins Rob me, Milkins was, yeah it's always lovely when it's someone like that who's been a bit of a in the nicest possible way like a journeyman of a pro and they get their their one and probably only ranking tournament but mm. you can tell for them it means so much because they're like They'd given up on ever winning, and then suddenly they mm. win it, and you're mm. like, "That's just a great sporting mm. story, really." Mm. Yeah, I think that those were, were probably my highlights of the season, really. Um, you know, a couple of nice wins along the way for for some, you know, Hendry for for instance. I think one did he win a match at the British Open or at, maybe he didn't actually. Yeah, no, I think he won a few matches last season. Yeah, because um, he's not at the bottom of the rankings, so he must have done something. Well, I know. He, he, you see, he won the he won the match with Jimmy White, didn't he, at the qualifiers last year? So I don't know whether that's just been propping him up all this time. But mm. hey, uh, no, yeah. What about you? What are your highlights of the season? Um, Rob Walker going round to Yamden Tower's house. Was that this Big season? Highlight. I think that was this Goodness season. Goodness me. Oh. At least it was on their YouTube this year, yeah, I think. That yeah. was a real, like, just like, you know, they don't always do things right, but that was so bonkers, and it, it both didn't work, and it was just hilarious for all the wrong reasons, and <laughs> just, just like, he'd not even moved in. Yeah. They'd not even finished moving in, and yeah. Rob was like, look at your carpet, and it's just like, what are you doing? So I liked that a lot. Um, and I would say, also, I like, um, I like the fact that like well JV and Dennis were at the World Championships because yeah. we didn't know whether they would be and they, they were mm-hmm. and they're going to at least be there for one more year and I hope they just keep them there to be honest because um, mm. you know it's without wanting to be too uh, you know morbid about it but it's like I mean come on guys literally they're they're probably are going to be fit enough to do it for another five or ten years. Just, mm-hmm. keep, just mm-hmm. keep them there. You mm-hmm. know, they, mm-hmm. it's like a, you know, they're not going to be here forever, and people mm. love them. So I don't know why you wouldn't just give them a uh, contract for as long as they wanted. To be honest, mm. absolutely. Um, and I think it's just been a, I've just yeah, I've just really enjoyed actually the variety of winners. I think when anyone wins, you know. Is it five or six titles a season that you can sometimes get a bit dull? Like literally, I think a couple of years ago, there were three finals where it was Judd beating Rizowski, and you just go, you just look at, you know, just follow the event, and you go, oh, this final again, okay, we know what's going to happen, and it happened, Judd beat him, and it was just like that's not exciting mm. when you, you know, when you go, oh, this finals, Zhao Zengtong against Luca Brussel, and you're like, wow, that's man, I, you know. I don't, actually, I like Brazil winning another title as well. I thought that was. Um... Mm, mm. It's a shame he let himself down with all his comments before the, the world snooker. Think, but um... I think yeah, him and Hossein Bafai, uh 
both have to have a bit of humble pie before, before next season, I think. They both... Mm-hmm. You know, well, I mean, I don't for... know if you've seen that the Stunker got 5 million viewers on Monday night. Yeah. You know? And that's because that's cause it was money. Do you know what I mean? It well, yeah. I, I, but, you know, people have a go at the BBC and whatever, but I'm sorry, Eurosport wouldn't have got that. No, it would not have done. No, no. especially because, um, you know, I don't know if we... I think I mentioned it in a previous episode, but the Eurosport coverage, they kept losing the signal in, in the... Uh, the qualifiers for the world championship yep. and it was just like mate like this is not good enough so mm, mm. it's that thing where that many viewers is uh, you know the most viewed show of, of the whole night on all telly in the mm, uk which mm. is for snooker to still be doing that you know mm. almost 40 years after the big 85 final is is incredible really yeah yeah i mean it's crazy to think that we're gonna have another anniversary of that coming up in a couple of years but um, yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. I hope they do something nice for it. I mean, for 25 years, I, I don't know if you remember, they did the, the sort of one-frame remake of it mm. with Davis and yeah. Taylor. I hope they do that again. That would be funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be nice. Fifty, the the fifteen year anniversary of of the of the anniversary. <laughs> yeah, why not? They may yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. That'd yeah. be good. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, we talked about that last time because that's when we talked about Pulse. So, yeah. Yeah, um, of course we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, it should be a good one. Uh, looking forward to seeing who comes back onto the tour from Q School this week, and or is it next week? I don't, I don't know. Well, let, well, let's do. I did think about talking about that. So for the final, final section of the podcast, shall we talk about who we think is going to come back? Who <clears> we think? Uh, I'll, I'll have to have a look at the Q School participants. Uh, and... Who do we think might miss out? That's a big question because. You know, you've got Kurt Mafflin, Fergal O'Brien, they've fallen off the I mean, uh, we're guaranteed to lose some of them, do you know what I mean? Um, that's the well, what is uh, incredible, I saw, is that uh, Fergal O'Brien lost his tour card because he lost a 15-year-old Liam Davis in the qualifiers. Mm. And his first match in Q school is against Liam Davis. <laughs> that is bizarre. That is some grudge match that's going to be going on there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And a yeah. bizarre grudge match, like a, an Irish man in his mid forties and a fifteen-year-old kid. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, you've got. Oh, I, th- I thought it was Liu Hong Hao, but it's not. It's <laughs> Liu Hong Yu. Um, oh, who's that? Is Hong Hao not in it? I'd, well, he might be, but I'm just right at the bottom of the list. And then we got Mickey Joyce. Um, Alfie Davis, okay. you know. Um, okay. Uh, a cha- Chachapong Nasa. <laughs> Na- <laughs> Natarapong Chaikul. Uh, Leon Crowley. I mean, you know, all the big names. Uh, <laughs> Stan oh, well, Moody. Stan Moody. Oh, he was in the shoot, wasn't he? Kid. <laughs> oh, it might be actually. Yeah, I was thinking of Jim Moody from uh, WSC or Nine, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> he might be his son, mate. It might be. Uh, what? Oh dear. Yeah, no, he is. He's fifteen years old. Yeah, Stan Moody. Uh, Liam Davis is in there. Um, I'm trying to pick up with sort of some of the maybe slightly known snooker names, but. Um... Which I was taking the mick with before. Chris Totten, I feel like I've heard of, of them before. Yeah, um, he's in Snooker 19, that's why I know him. Is he actually? Yeah, yeah. Uh. He's, young, he's, he's one of the Scottish rising stars. God, uh, I mean, that just shows I don't, I, I've, not, I've not played everybody on Snooker 19 yet. Um, I'd like to see a list of how many you have played, I bet you've played most of them. <sighs> I mean, I have every match I ever played with Ronnie. In a spreadsheet, so. <laughs> um, Adam if Duffy. Get... Adam Duffy. That, that's a name from. Um... If you want to order the uh, the Captain Goodspeed uh, Snooker Nineteen Almanac. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Dean Reynolds. Uh, I, th- I think t- it's Dean Reynolds. Oh. <gasps> Dean Reynolds, right. So I think Dean Reynolds is in that snooker manager game that I played. What the one from the eighties? Yes, because he's fifty nine. No. <laughs> Genuinely, 
Andy Lee, goodness me. Um, who else is in there? Daniel Wells. I didn't know he dropped off. Oh, wow. Um, that's quite good. Yeah. Uh, Ian Brumby, you know. Ian Brumby. Simon Bedford, he was on um, World Championship 2005. I remember that. He's 46. Um, I'm nearly at the top. Oh, Luke Simmons. Mm -hmm. Brandon Sargent. Eden Sharav. Harvey Chandler, who I've just played in the uh, Rising yeah, Star. In the, Tony in the Knowles. Um, Tony Knowles? Yeah. He's just been in the seniors. Uh, I mean, he was woeful in the seniors. I think he won a fair few matches at Q School last year, you know. He's 66. Um, ben Mertens, he seems to be a, a, a person that's in there a lot. Sidney Wilson, Ross Bullman. Um, Ryan Davis as well. Robbie McGuigan, I know he, he lost to Jimmy White a couple of years ago in qualifying. Leo Fernandez, uh, he's an older player. Rod Lawler's in there. Oh, um, come on, Rod. Rod the plot. Billy, Billy Castle, James Cahill, uh, John Astley. And then you you have got some reasonably big names up here. You've got Sohail uh, Vahedi, um, and you've got Michael Georgiou. Um, Sean Maddox, Julian Boyko, um, Ben Hancorn, Aaron Hill, Peter Devlin, Lee Walker, mm. um, Stephen Hallworth, and then you've of course got Fergal, Rory, uh, McLeod, Ashley Carty, Andrew Higginson, Sonia Carney, Martin O'Donnell, Kurt Mafflin, and Michael Holt. I mean, what a field that is! Sonia Carney's falling off. Yeah. Oh man. That's yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. 69 well, who, in the um, world. Yeah. Shall we both? Because I, I think, is it 12 players get on? <sighs> what What if we both pick six each and we see how many of those? Six each, okay. Right, I'll go first. Can't, we, <laughs> yeah, so it's like, it's like picking a team. Like picking All right, your, All right so your we need to team. write this down somewhere. Let me, let All me, right. let me get a bit of paper. Um... Actually, I'll do it. I'll do it on Word. I'll not be an old person. Let's uh, <laughs> let's just do it on Word, right? So, go on. I'll I'll, I'll let you play as privi privilege. You can go first. Well, I'm gonna go Kurt Mathlin. Okay. I'm gonna go Michael Holt. Uh, then I'll go Liam Davis and Neil. Okay. <laughs> I've got such a temptation to be really silly with with some of my choices. Um, you know what? Just because he's in there, I've got to go Dean Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to at least see how he got on. Okay, well, I... Um, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Don't. Don't go Tony Knowles. <laughs> I don't think Tony Knowles. Let's go for it. <laughs> imagine. Imagine if he gets on. I mean, well, that's what I don't get. Why doesn't he get a two-year invitational to a card if he wants to play? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, he played more than Henry, so... <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go Rod the Plod. Oh, good choice. Uh, I'm... <clears throat> I'm going to go with Ben Mertens. Okay. So he's been a very young player who it's felt like for years they've been saying will break through, so mm -hmm. it's time. Um, next, I'm going to go for McLeod. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just checking the names on my computer just to see. I, w I want to pick someone who I've not heard of just for just for the fun and if they get through then that would be incredible so I'm going to go with do, do, do. I was going to say where's Nigel Bond but he's retired isn't he so. oh, gone too soon Nigel you've gone too soon mate I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's too young you know what I mean I'm going to go 
I've no idea who this is. They're Australian. They're called Simon Bevs. <laughs> what number is he? Um, oh, I don't know. Which page have you found them on? Oh, just on WST. Uh, si- oh, yeah, I've got him. Simon Bevs. There we go. So he's 48 years old. <laughs> oh, no, what have okay. I done? In my head, I was like, he might be a 21-year-old up, up and coming. Uh. Come on, Simon. Uh. <laughs> Well, to be fair, I've got Dean Reynolds, who, you know... If I'm going to have to follow their, their matches um, and watch as they all lose 3-0. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go Mickey Joyce. Um, did you say there was numbers? Did you say they're numbered? They are numbered. I'm going to go yeah. for a number... They're numbered from 1 to 173, so... OK, I'm going to go for 168, whoever that is. <laughs> oh, Christ. You, you've gone for Mehlan uh, Maneshka. <laughs> yep, that's the one. Uh, 32-year-old from Canada. OK. There you go. Maybe we've not got a Canadian on tour. Maybe... <laughs> Hopefully... Maneshka. Right. Oh, they're not watching this. Um, <laughs> right, so that's your six. That's your team. I'll, I'll do a recap in a, in a second of the teams. Um, uh, who am I going to go for? Ah, here we go. This is the one. I'm going to go for Baba Mazi. What? Baba Mazi. <laughs> that's a cracking name. Yeah. Baba Nancy Kenny Potter Ball. <laughs> obviously not. He's in Q school. <laughs> um, right. Oh my goodness. Why is Anton Dubeck like? There's there's a little. Um, is Anton Dubeck in little... Q school? <laughs> no, he's not. There was a little uh, sort of ad on the bottom uh, of Betfred. It's just it looks like Anton Dubeck. Hang on, I'll try and get a snip and tool of it. <laughs> You're gonna think it's not him, but Oh hang on. Maybe I'll just share my screen again, hang on. Um Bear with everybody. Right, wait for this to update. It's coming. <laughs> Can you see? Is he doing a better Fred thing? Uh, I don't know if it is him though. <laughs> what is this? He's on. Some, he's on some sort of. It is him, isn't it? Or like a better Fred advert? I just don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it does look like him though. He's, why is uh, he? What has he got to do with the snooker? I'm very confused. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? But. Um... <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right, so um, recap of the team. So your team captain is uh, Kurt Mafflin, mm. and uh, the other five players you've got Liam Davis, Tony Knowles, Ben Mertens, Simon Bevs, <laughs> and Mehlan uh, Maneshka. Come on, guys, have we got this? And my team captain is Michael Holt, uh, and uh, supporting him, we've got Dean Reynolds, Rod Lawler, Rory McLeod, Mickey Joyce. And Baba Mazzy. <laughs> I mean, if either of, if any of our like really left field <laughs> choices make it, we're gonna have to follow them all of the next two seasons to see how well they do. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to invite them on the podcast. Yeah, go Bar- Baba, say, mate. We predicted. Baba, we knew, Bar-ba. we knew you were gonna make it. <laughs> you and Simon Bebs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, yeah, the time difference might be a bit of an issue with that one, but. Um... No, that was good. That was good. Yeah. That was good um, we'll see. Um, we're both back in Fergal to drop off. Oh, God, so, yeah. And Sonny Akani. Well, Martin O'Donnell. I think we got carried away. Andrew Higginson. We carried away with the silly, uh, silly ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God yeah. we've not put money on this. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Anton would be stealing our money straight away. He'd be dancing off of it. <laughs> Waltzing off into the <laughs> sunset with our money. Oh dear. Right. Oh, shall we shall we well, wrap it up here? Um I think so. If you have any uh if your own predictions for Q school or on anything else we've said, please do let us know below. Um 
please do cheer on our favourites. Who knows? Maybe if you tweet them, say you believe in them, and it'll give them the confidence to win. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But no, it's it's been a pleasure, and uh, I think it's definitely something we want to do more often. And um, you know, talk about the silly things of snooker because nobody, realistically, nobody else has ever. <laughs> went on uh, that BBC Sport article <laughs> and read out those ridiculous things and found out whatever happened to that BBC journalist <laughs> who got hacked <laughs> <laughs> by some strange woman um, that last tweeted in 2015. Yeah. I mean, if they did talk about that, then fair play. And I would like a link to that in the comments, please, if uh, there was another podcast out there that talked about no, that. I think but... we've made stupid history tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But now it was good. No, thank you for having me on. Tom. That's all right. Thank you for joining me, Joe. Don't forget to uh, go follow Joe's channel. And um, yeah, we will be back. I mean, I don't know how often we're going to do it. Probably, maybe we'll do a, a post Q spool Q spool Q spool a post Q spool special. <laughs> Q Q school yeah. Q school special. Maybe we'll do that, and we'll see how our choices yeah. did. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and you know, I, th I think, I think, we've probably predicted none of the the twelve that are gonna be on, but um, we'll see. Hey, if we get one of them we'll right see. each, then we've done all right. Yeah, I think. yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Absolutely. Please do subscribe. Please like all of that stuff. Um, watch Joe's snooker videos on his channel cheer him on to the uh, world championship glory with Joe O'Connor and there we go <laughs> he's actually he's doing as as John John Berg would say oh a fist pump there there we go it's, it's good to see some emotion that's what John raising me cue in the air like Dennis <laughs> just like the uh, I mean Tom can you see the the Dennis figure oh I like can oh that's beautiful yeah yeah <laughs> is he near Buzz Lightyear he is near Buzz Lightyear <laughs> He doesn't like to talk about that, though. I'm in the only room in, in the country that's got a Dennis uh. Taylor near Buzz Lightyear in their bedroom. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And on, on that beautiful note, we will uh, catch you very soon. Thanks for listening, guys, and take care. See you later. <laughs>